Uh, welcome back to another episode of Exploring the Process. We've got, this is episode 10, our lucky number 10, uh, Chris. Yeah. So yeah, we, um, another episode here, just, uh, just the, the main man, my main man, uh, you know, a thousand, at thousand air FX. Um, we're going to come up with, uh, yeah, we're going to kind of review a bit more of our kind of individual processes, I think, to, or processes, I guess is the appropriate way of saying that uh, today. Uh, so stay tuned. But we also going to talk a little bit about just market setup out of the gate in terms of what we're seeing kind of outlook stuff like that uh so yeah so you know yesterday in particular so we're recording this on the 17th so this is the day after the fomc meeting and uh, of, of march march 17th and so uh so yeah so uh so long story short is today or yesterday in my humble opinion was a bit of a day it was a day to start to execute right so start getting the dominoes set up so that you can knock them down mm-hmm for that kind of three to four months down the road time frame, So I keep kind of harping on. And even in the notebook session last night, I kept saying, you know, like I'm setting up for May, June, right? May, June, May, June. Um, you know, coach has been talking about, you know, talk, you know, come back and talk to me about bonds in nine to 12 months, because that's how long, you know, he's kind of expecting to hold them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's very appropriate, right? So there's different kind of, you know, obviously uh, mindsets in investing, uh, not even demeanors, but investing time time horizons, right? So you've got obviously like near term uh, near term setups, which is what we do do, right? And and you know it's kind of a hybrid of like day trading, but they you know it's like trading, but you know as I said, setting up for months from now. Um, and but and, and so, so so yesterday to be, I, I'd been patiently waiting. It had felt like a long time um, in terms of you know waiting for the top end of the range to come back. I had very few shorts on. Uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but, but again, you know, it wasn't, I, I didn't take a bazooka out yesterday. It was just like incrementally, you know, start starting off because to me, this, the, the setup was there in terms of top end of the risk range on, on like some of the U S equities that, you know, that I wanted to basically start reshorting, um, the VIX was probing the low end, right? It got under 30 and then started drifting down to 28. So again, the setup was there, whether it was an FOMC meeting or not, you know, to me, I would have executed it in the same, same manner. And I think that's important. Uh, and I know you do this, right? Like you don't give two shits about what's happening from an event standpoint. Um, and again, I don't mean that like in a harsh way. It's just like, you know, you just, you have your process and you just execute. And, um, you know, that's definitely something that I've learned to adopt and, and to deploy, over the last, you know, probably two years, really since getting to Hedge Eye, and 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 most recently, it's just you know, kind of again, it's like sounds boring, but you see the numbers and you just hit the button, right? <laughs> and it's like, um, so yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, you know, it just it's, it is boring, you know, and even you know, if you just watch again, like I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be coach, but like if you just watch me, if if you and I just had a video all day long, we other than just shooting the shit, we would just literally you know, again, like other than my day job, if, I'm, if you were just watching me trade, I'd just be like bouncing between screens, right? <laughs> Hitting go. <laughs> and, and it's like very, it's like very quiet, very boring, you know? Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I, you know, I, I, was, I mentioned it, it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It was interesting for me because I, so I didn't take part in the call last night. So I listened to it this morning while I was walking the dog. Right. Yeah. And something that I picked up on was, um, but well, maybe separately. So on f- a group that we have, a group chat that we have on Friday, I kind of left with the question. I, I finished early and left to ask, and I just sort of asked a question. I just said, hey, what if, if bonds, if bonds rally, so if yields fall, like we think, do stocks rally with them? Because they've spent so long being negatively correlated i.e they both going down together does it immediately mean that if if bonds do rally does the correlation stop and to, to kind of tie into that part was for the last i don't know one or two weeks for the last one or two weeks of um the notebook reviews there's been lots of little things about like like bringing Mike Green in and bringing his sort of like the 23rd of March in, but then all of a sudden that disappeared yesterday. It's like, does that not matter anymore? Because it's not even the 23rd of March yet. (laughs) No, no. And so something that people, and I'm I'm not like, I'm I'm not expecting an answer. I'm just saying like that, that formed a big part of the conversation two weeks ago and even one week ago. And now it just doesn't exist, but it hasn't happened yet. 
like two weeks ago, everyone was saying, oh, this is really important. We have to think about these flows that are coming on the 23rd of March. Well, yeah. that's still six days away. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think you're spot on, right? And and uh, I was, I had some like direct messages where folks were kind of like messaging that and and, and saying, you know, um, just around, you know, what when do those passive flows start? You know, has Mike Green said anything about the passive flows, right? And and I don't think he's really updated anything yet. And but those are still there, right? I mean, but yeah. you know, I, I think to, you know, not to get so that's yeah, so that's where like I know like. But then if I tie this into your like Gex situation, right. In terms of like what yeah. you sent me yesterday. So you sent me kind of like, there's, you know, basically you were waiting or being more patient because you, you see kind of a, like a, like a threshold on the Gex that kind of needs to get filled in a little bit. Right. I mean, I'm simplifying this, but, but, but that's kind of the, the, what, what you're, what you kind of communicated to me and, and, you know, <clears throat> but then, Again, maybe well, I can pull it up. I mean, do you have it handy, or do you? I can. I have it here, just to show people. So, can I share what you said? No. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, like the part for me is, and people throw these statistics around all the time. It's, you know, if stocks go up eighty six percent of the time. But a big one for me, and that's because I, I, I have to think about my own bias, that I spend a lot of time looking at gold and silver and commodities and currencies far more like equities take up less than 10% of my time. So there's that bias, right? There's that bias that I have that. But it's if stocks spend 80, like whatever, 80% 80 of the time going up, why does everyone concentrate on the hero trade of trying to short stocks? <laughs> right? When there's things yeah. like, so the dollar, the dollar, the dollar today, the risk range is, is you know, is uh, the low end has come up now on the dollar. So there's the dollar to buy. The, yesterday there was gold and silver to buy. Instead of heroing in on, <laughs> like, I, don't, but, I, I don't know. And I know no, that everyone, I, like, and I know you and everyone else is far more dispersed. It's not like a, right now is the perfect time to short the S and P five hundred. You like go far more into the individual components, and I get that. Yeah. It's just it's, it is one of those things. It's like if it's so hard, <laughs> why is everyone yeah. doing it when there's things that are going up and have strong uptrends? Yeah, no, I, and you know, a, a gentleman, I think he, uh, I'm drawing blank on his name, but you know, he mentioned kind of like the signal strength and in, in energy, right? And it's like, yeah, like the the energy signal strength is still very good, and you know, I dipped my toe in yesterday as well, right? So it's like you're, you're spot on there in terms of, um, you know, for me, and and I communicated this last night. It's like you know, my core focus right now is making sure that I have the size on in those three assets that you basically just said. It's you know, gold, dollar, and for for me, bonds. Right. So I know they're bullish trend, but I think that's going to break. And and I'm, I you know, I, I don't mind picking a bottom every once in a while. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so those are my three biggest ones that I want to get right. Right. And then and then um, you know, energy was really is really the only one that's had really solid single strength, and it was the only one that's been at the, those that like kind of gave you back an opportunity to, to at the low end of the range. Um, everything else, even like utilities, I know you know they're 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 stronger, but they're not the low end of the range. And like again, like I'm there's no to me if I've learned anything over like basically year to date is that there's really no need to to chase. Uh, right. I mean, there, there's an opportunity like the market will come back like gold, can, like gold ripped. Right. And, and you never you didn't think I'd been on kind of like a min position on gold for probably two weeks. And it was just like, all right, right like just take your time, you know, you know, it'll come mm -hmm. back like and then all of a sudden you've got it at the low end of the range the last basically two days, really, at the end of the day. And it's been a phenomenal setup. And 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 so, yeah. And, and then, you know, you've got these. So, again, maybe maybe you can share a little bit more about kind of like what you're seeing here and what, what you saw or like how this was influencing your, um, again, just like basically your, um, it's not even, it's so not I, even like lack, it's not even lack of caring. It's just like, you know, this is what you were seeing for SP and it was kind of keeping you away. Also, 
my wife just brought me an awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's why she, that's why she walked in. My daughter gave it to her. I, I, my daughter gave it to her drop off, and she's like, "Daddy needs a necklace for St. Patrick's Day." So here we go. I got my shamrock. I got my lucky shamrock, Chris. So, so a lot of these gamma these gamma levels that people share. Um, you know, there's a few people that share them now and they come up in a lot of conversations and admittedly, I bring them up a lot, but it was more from the fact that I was like, trying to understand what they mean and whether I can use them or not. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't necessarily something that was keeping me away. It's that when, when I look at a chart, so like this, the bottom one that's here, this distance from one month high, it literally takes today's price and gives me a percentage of where it is compared to the highest point in the last 30 days, the highest closing price in the last 30 days. Okay. Yeah. So anytime that it's above zero, so the blue line is on the left-hand side of the chart. So anytime it's above zero, that means it's making a new high. Got it. Yep. So you can see the blue line stopped making new highs on a one month basis, you know, coming into um coming into january yep and it hasn't made a new high since now although i joke and say i'm not a technical analyst i kind of am but i'm doing technical analysts i'm look at things on a chart based on a representation of how the computer sees it not how a person sees it and drawing wiggly lines and giraffes vomiting and stuff and all that kind of stuff right so this is where i draw these boxes okay so i draw a box i i can i share that one too is that okay so if the price doesn't have to move very much for it to get to a new one month high that's the point i'm trying to make okay so yeah right so i just draw this one month box and that gives me the lowest, and so the lowest price and the highest price within the month. And that's the red box, right? Just for everybody's so listening. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I use yeah, the, so the green the is so ten days. Green is ten days, fifteen days, and then one month. And that's one okay. calendar month. Okay. So like twenty. Normally it's like twenty-two or twenty-three days. Sure. All right. So this was yesterday. So now mechanically the price has moved everything. That box has now moved over one day. Yeah. And straight away the one month high without the price even moving, although it did move yesterday and and again this morning. Mechanically, the one month high has now moved down. I can't remember. It's moved down like 40 odd points. Yeah. So the one month high is is 38, 43.81 or something like that. I can't see. Yeah, 43.81, yeah. So that's how I look at charts now. Because... (laughs) I mean, admittedly, I don't draw them and I don't have moving averages and stuff on there. Oh. But prices always tend to kind of like they all move around these levels. And when I draw the box, it just shows me a high and a low and yeah. within whatever date bracket it is. I use a center line. Perfect example was yesterday, which was gold. You know, gold so, reversed. Sorry. Gold reversed at a point. Gold reversed at a point which was exactly in the middle of that, but on a three-month chart. So, trend. so that's so. This center line is like basically this green one. Is that right? Yeah. So that's for the ten-day one. Yeah. Okay. And then the red center line would be got it. Okay. All right. Yeah. So now, is that red? So what? So what I'm trying to show is when I'm drawing these boxes, and I've, and I've, I've showed it with I've shown it with the arrow there, is that like the the price doesn't have to make some huge move and have some quote unquote breakout to get a new high. (laughs) Right. For It's just that a a previous high needs to fall out of the back end of the, of the look back window, whichever one it is. Right. So then let's just say, so like if somebody's doing this at home, right, Chris, and they're trying to like kind of track this a little bit and just like visually see it. Cause I do think it's, you've, you've, you explained this to me a few months ago and it's, it's certainly a concept that um, I now incorporate all the time, right? Just when I look at something, I'm like, okay, well, that, 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 as you said, like that, that 
previous high is going to like fall off the screen. There's no longer, and the machine is no longer going to care about it because yeah. it's, you know, again, it's like, even when I'm doing some of my, like my weekly stuff, right. Is typically when I do more of like the, you know, like the, the, we talked about this last week, like the one week, one month, three month stuff, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm seeing something really kind of like catch my eye, be like, Oh, weird. Like that was like negative. Oh yeah. Like last week or like what transpired here. And sometimes to your point, you know, I'll go and look and it's like, okay, like the price action didn't really shift any. It's just, you know, it, it fell off. I think a good example um, there mm-hmm. is you, you've gotten some one month price momentum in a few things like, um, uh what was it like uh uh not for financials just gained three months but uh oh like with REITs and like yeah. healthcare you know REITs, they've REITs kind of was a good, yeah REITs was an REITs. example I was going to use oh, okay perfect yeah so yeah, anyway so so my question so I, I won't steal your thunder on REITs then but I, my, my question is so when this kind of starts to move over do you then you then shift it to like this next day and then you'll shift it down here or like so yeah, when so this cl- so, so again so like it's when, a, when some, so it's a so, closing price so it's a closing price so effectively okay. that red line will move down to the same one as the blue line because you can see that right because this is then the basically the newest high, or the most this is the most recent one month high right yeah so you line it up with so again so this so if this had bounced and this has gone like higher again right so if this had been up to like 4420 you would have mm-hmm. moved that down to like 4420 yeah Right. So you just move it down to basically the highest one month high. Whatever um, the highest closing price is within your window. Within the window. Perfect. Okay. Okay. And then you just keep shifting it basically. So you move that here and then this would just kind of keep shifting over unless for some reason this, we made it one new one month high. Then you would, again, it just follows the count. Like you shift this over and this would move up and then, you know, as I got it. Okay. Um, That makes perfect sense. But then you start to see it's, it takes time and I'm trying to, I'm trying to write something now that does this for me, maybe not in trading view, maybe in something else, because this is effectively, because if I can take those boxes out and just have those center lines, it becomes a better version of a moving average. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. There's not a volatility component, but you can get that from other places. Yep. Because it really gives you a really good then indicator. You have, the visual, you have the visualization. So you can see, because when, let's take gold as an example, the boxes on the short term, definitely like the 10 day, 15 day and 30 day, just shot up like this. Yeah. Really yep. extended, super high. Okay. Maybe I'll um, pull yeah. that up real fast. Maybe, just for... let me, maybe I'll share my screen. And you'll see or why don't you share yours? Yeah, yeah, perfect. How do I do it? Where's the button? On the bottom. Welcome to 2022. Uh, I can't find it. Like it's the green one. Just hover over it, and it's the green one. There you go. It's 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 green. It says share screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Is that working? Yes, I can see XLK right now. All right. So. So if you look at gold, so these are the old, these are the old parts. So this is where the, like, obviously the one month used to be here at one point and it's yep. all shifted up. It's all shifted higher. And a good part about this chart is, so this was this center line here. So you can see this, what was it? 1914 was this point where it did break below it and then it's moved up and it yep. coincided strangely with the risk range. <laughs> right. 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 But um, so as we move forward in time, now it's going to take a little while, but the low is also going to shift because these prices are all going to fall out. Okay. Yep. I have to think of a, a better chart to use. Um, um, one where it's much closer. Okay. Oil is a good example, right? So, yep. In like four or five days, this low price is going to shift out. Okay, yep. this is going to fall out of the end, which means over the coming weeks, this price is just going to keep shifting up and up and up to these lower prices. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, what you're going to get with that is volatility is going to fall with that. And you kind of saw that happen this morning as well. Yeah. Even... Yeah. So there's that, but 
so this also so oil also got to this kind of decision point where it was okay yep yep but very quickly it's very quickly these so the 10 day will set it first but if oil fails here it doesn't have to go much lower in order to break in order to break a trend level yeah right and, 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 and I, uh, yeah so this is what I was saying. This is what I was saying before. It's like as the price moves higher, all of these trade and trends keep following up and up and up to the point where they all kind of bunch together. And it was quite interesting. So I listened to something. Um, where I had a long walk today. <laughs> I listened to another one, which was um, a guy I've heard before, and we've talked about it before about having the, uh, the guy's called Harry Krishnan, and he's got a new book out called second leg down now his previous book is, is so what i'm talking about now is is where i've said about building out these different so have like a, a little spreadsheet in the background which will show you kind of how a 60 40 might have been buying and selling have a trend following thing in the background to show how you know is are the, are the trend followers all like super long in any given one sector? It's a bit like using CFTC futures. You know, are, is the street super long in any one place? Obviously, right now, they're super short bonds and super long the S&P 500. So that's just using positioning. So this, when I say that I'm like, <laughs> I'm a pseudo technical analyst, that's what I'm doing is I'm trying to figure out what like... At what prices might people be forced to close positions? Like at what prices might the trend followers in all these energy plays be forced to close their longs? Just as an example. And I use that in currencies and everything else because trend following, like with anything, so trend following is more, <laughs> is a larger proportion of the trade in, in some things than it is in others. You know, so... Obviously, like leveraged hedge fund type market neutral strategy, maybe is obviously more prevalent in equities and all these other like soft commodities and everything are much more driven by you know, what are the trend followers doing today? Like, are they going to be forced if the price gets to here, are they going to be forced to close their longs? Yeah. So, uh, I know, like, uh, so when I draw it on a chart, all I'm just trying to do is just a lot of the mechanical things that happen, it's like, oh, why did that all of a sudden happen? And like you said, so, you, you know, you can go two or three days and all of a sudden you're like, oh, XLRE has got positive one month momentum. Like, why? It hasn't, the price hasn't really moved. And it's like, well, because a group of higher prices have just fallen out of the one month. You're not comparing against those high prices anymore. Yeah. So like, let me see. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, basically, I just pulled it up. And again, I think right. the market's, so this, so market's over been the last, retired. Over the yeah, last couple so of days, this high on the 9th of February has just fallen out of the look back now. Right. And I used it. I made a video. I haven't done a video of my own for a little while, but I used the example of um, EWH. Um, one that I did for about five or six months ago was on um, high beta. Um. And if you're just, looking for the just, and just and showing this dynamic, yeah. And if you're looking for those, you know, uh, Chris has done some his own kind of videos walking people through uh, many of these various concepts. On uh, it's he's got a YouTube channel called uh, ETF Pro, and yeah. So go, you know, like, subscribe, uh, go <laughs> go watch a few of those. They're they're very they're very educational. Uh, so yeah. So 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 what so you so it's always based off the high right so like as this so you said the feb got it so basically i see what you're saying so basically so that the the big box is the three months and then the little box is the so this is, is yeah the, so let's the little say, box is the one month right so yeah so we were we had been there right or it had been basically up there right yeah so it had been up right, there so and that's, then, right so that's what it was on the on the ninth correct and then as we moved lower you got it okay. now it's and more then each day literally in the next day as soon as the day shifted yep all of a sudden 
It's basically you know, it's in gone from forty seven forty. Yep. Yep. To forty six sixty, and it just means that like so, and mechanically here now, obviously that on that day the price did drop, but just mechanically, yeah. just automatically closer to a one month high. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, which which um, makes perfect sense, right? And then as you get, and again, it's like it's kind of like the. But then, but then visually, so. But then visually, you'll start to see like. It, like for me, it's just interesting just to have these and just to have a quick look at them because visually you'll start to see. So let's bonds, okay? Perfect example that everyone's paying a lot of attention to right now. Sure. So a bond proxy is real estate, right? Yep. Now, real estate has already started in an uptrend. Yep. Yeah, no, it's a really whereas, good point. Whereas bonds haven't. At least... At least, you know, XLRE has one month price momentum. Yeah. No, I mean, it... and again, so as, as this is moving down, so over the next, what, 10, it's gonna, 15 it's, days, it's, it's going to start to look even better in a three months. It's going to start coming down and slowly it's going to start to get, as we move through the next month, definitely. Yep. It's going to regain three month price momentum. Yep. So it's like, it's again, and, and it doesn't really have to go far. It really just has to get back up to like kind of like the 49 level uh, over, you know, again, it's got to move like a dollar or, you know, dollar and a half, right? Like exactly in, ter yeah. in, ter in terms of, uh, you know, what it needs to do, which on a percentage change basis, basis is not a huge ask, right? Especially yeah. if bonds start to drift lower, they don't need to go, you know, they don't need to go much lower to kind of like have that correlation you know, in, in place. Um, and yeah, no, it's definitely one of these, it, it's a very interesting component. And as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's you know, I, I was lucky enough to kind of have you sit me down and walk me through this back in January. And it's definitely been a key component in terms of like how I'm, in terms of like transitions, both negative and positive. So that, yeah. And the, the, only, reason the, I start, the only reason I started doing it was because Keith kept saying things you know over and over again and you know i've built other stuff that i can't really share here that uses this but keith always says like with risk ranges people are saying at the minute well why isn't all these other different things in there like get rid of the currencies and stuff add all these extra etfs in i'm like okay i get it but if it's not in there he's not taking he's it's not that he's not taking this he's not doesn't think it's useful to him for the amount of time that he has Correct. So on the macro show, if you're actually listening to it, if he says stuff over and over and over and over again, it's important to him. Correct. So that was one of the things that, why the fuck does he keep talking about closing prices and one month price momentum? So I just drew it on a chart. And that's, yeah. and this is, it, take an example of gold and everyone keeps posting, especially even more so now, about this big, huge cup in handling gold, right? That's been forming for 80 bajillion years or whatever it is, right? It might be the most important chart ever. It could be, but 95% or so we're told, 95% of trading volume is algorithmic and systematic. So all I've started to do is I've just drawn my charts that look like the 95% rather than the 5%. Yeah, yeah. Because not only are they 95%, they also have like however many trillions of dollars that they're using. <laughs> so which one's more important? Is it the vomiting donkey or is it, you know, like I'm not trying to yeah. say that it doesn't work for people. That's not my case. I'm just saying I'm trend following the fact that the trend is to systematic. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> just trend following asset. I'm trend following a trend, which is you just have to draw your charts like a computer would draw them. Yeah. Right. And we've talked about this a lot, right? I mean, it's like taking the emotion out and that's just really, and again, it's just like thinking like a computer and now analyzing stuff like a computer, they really only, they input data and then they spew out their recommendation. Right. And they, and exactly, they, ex yeah. and they execute. So they take, they take, you know, input a plus input B plus input C and they're like, Oh shit. Well, you know, rates are down or whatever, you know, rates are down, <clears throat> 
uh, you know, down 10 bips or whatever it is. Okay, great. Well, you know, where can I go find that? Inf- like what has good correlation? Okay. Well, real estate, healthcare, um, you know, utilities, right. And we've seen all those like utilities are up 7.21% in the last month, right. Healthcare is up yeah. 4.57. REITs are up 4.08%, right. So it's like, you know, you get this, you know, you get this information and then they go and, and attack it. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's very, very, um, it's an awesome way. Again, it's like if you're not thinking about this or if you haven't thought about it in this manner, um, certainly, again, I'm just going to reiterate when he, when he sat down with me and kind of showed me this, it really was a light bulb because it's like, you know, I kind of, I was already sort of seeing this, but then it just made it even clearer because again, you know, Keith mentioned it yesterday. It's like folks are like, folks are visual, right? So it's like, you know, you draw the box, like you can visually see that like the price decreased, you know, from, you know, what is that? 53 down to a low of 45 or whatever it is, right? I'm using round numbers, yeah. 40, 43. But, you know, when you see it in the box form, you're like, oh shit, well, it only needs like, you know, one more, you know, it only needs a couple more days in order to like have this massive, you know, the high fall out um, from, from from late uh, 2022 and you need and you do need to combine everything else because this function yeah, it's might not just it's, be, it's it not might, just it right, might just sorry. be a trade it might just be a trade that's the thing but it might be a trade that you can you at least either so like right now with the s p 500 scenario okay it didn't take much so this was the point that i tried to make on friday it was if because the question about correlations came up last night in terms of the US dollar and um commodities. Commodities. Yeah. So in my head, in the in my head while I was walking, I was like, well, what over 30 years, over three years, over three months? Like what correlation? Because right now there's a negative correlation between or oh, sorry, positive correlation. Bonds and stocks are moving together. And it's like, that's, that was my thought process from Friday coming into this week. And it's like, well, if, if we think that bonds are going to rally, does that mean that within the space of two days, that correlation is going to completely break down and it's going to mean that stocks sell off? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> but the cor- like, depending on how long you've got the car, is it over five days? Is it over 10 days? Is it over a month? It will take time for that correlation to burn off. So that yep. was just the thing that put me on the back burner before putting any shorts on. So that's just my thought process for that. It's, it's no, the, it's the it won't take much, as we've shown in the in the last chart. Like it won't take much for the S and P five hundred to catch one month price momentum. Now it might literally be a trade over the next one or two days for it to ultimately fail. But it yep. was just something for me to say, right, this isn't the point for me. Correct. Just yet. Right. It's like, you know, again, you know, uh, coach keeps mentioning the shark line, right? So it's like maybe maybe just let it get a hair closer to the shark line and then <clears throat> and then put on the trade, uh, you know, where you've got, you know, again, where so like you, yes, I hear you loud and clear. And, 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 then, ulti- like, and then ultimately, it's, it's, now, Keith, now Keith used it, now Keith obviously tied it with the VIX and like the VIX broke down. Therefore, the shark line moved. <laughs> you know, the sea, <laughs> the sea level went up. The sea level went up all of a sudden. Yeah, and that's or what came, I was. Or, or we came further inshore. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And that's what I was trying to com- communicate last night. It's like, listen, it's all correlated, right? So, like, you can look at one piece of the puzzle, but like, you know, the VIX, you know, again, like, even just, yes, we were talking yesterday, right? So, like, that that VIX went, dropped down. It was like 2832 on. Tuesday and then 2773 the low end on on Wednesday so like that then had an immediate correlation to where the top end of the risk range is and uh you know the same thing you know the same same thing um transpires you know it's 4384 is the top end today right with a with a VIX of 2561 so like those things are all yep. correlated though those things are all correlated now the interesting thing part is obviously the 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 spread on the VIX is 20, you know, 25 and a half to 37 and, and, and a quarter basically. Right. So, um, you know, that that's got a wide range, which means volatility is still absolutely trending. Right. Um, but yeah. you know, if you pull up like the VIX chart, you can also, so maybe can you pull up the fix real, real fast? Yeah. 
because I did it the other day and there's some big spikes there that are going to start to kind of like wane off. Right. Um, in terms of kind of, you know, again, we're, we're like that bottom end is going to come up. Right. So like, we're, I don't know how many, yeah. So that's pretty close to, yeah. So we've got kind of like another two weeks, like the end of the month, right. You're going to yeah. get that, you know, on the three month basis, you're going to get that, that really low volatility that we had at the end of the year. And those, those levels are going to start to move higher. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's going to be interesting in that component as well, because, you know, again, you just look at this chart and you're like, okay, well, higher volatility certainly seems like it's going to be here to stay for the, for the, for the interim. Um, yeah. and, um, until we have sort of like a, a, a greater breakdown, right. In, in, in price action, basically. So we had a brief interruption there guys. So we're going to, we had to cut, we had to cut this in half. So we're going to restart. I think, so what I was, what I was getting at is, you know, he mentioned this yesterday in the Magra show is like the, the closing price, right. Impacts, it impacts like where the risk range then moves to. And it might not have been, it was definitely this week. I believe it was yesterday. Um, and so, and again, it's like, I was, I guess there's going to be about 25, you know, basically like 25 and, you know, basically mid 25s in terms of where the VIX, VIX low end is going to be. And again, I did not, I don't, I didn't have, I don't have your stuff, but what that, that middle line is what, that's 26 and a half, basically 2662. Yeah, so it's just a hair under that, right? And and VIX is, is dropping down below that. But th- this is is a perfect example of is a perfect example of where these, you know, just these boxes can give you an idea as to, you know, where again, it's like you take it all into consideration, right? Like this is just one little tool or like one little visualization that you incorporate into the other stuff that you you, you study, right? Whether it's, you know, um, macro show content, you know, it's the, the quad setup, the upcoming, you know, the potential data, right? Like the, where, where, where the forecast is going, um, you know, so the early look today was all about basically, you know, the <laughs> upcoming really hard base effects and the comps and, and all that kind of thing uh, that are coming down the pipeline and what that, means for growth just from like a ready change standpoint. So again, it's all data driven. And so you incorporate all these things and, you know, you've got base, you know, again, like the, the VIX here to me, right? Like just, it, it can drift lower, but the probability is that it's near, it's, it's obviously near the low end of the range on, on, and on coaches risk range, but then just also from a machine standpoint, it's, it's going to have, the machine's going to have a hard time driving that much lower over the next few days, right. Or like the next few weeks, because as I, as I just mentioned, you know, a few minutes ago, like that, those low end, like the, the low volatilities there are going to really start to drop off. Right. And, and you're going to get it. And yeah, it's going to basically the box is going to shrink. And so again, to your point, it's going, you know, it's, it's going to go from this right up to that point, which you've talked about a number of times on our calls. Um, and, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a really good visualization. So, you know, again, thank you for sharing this. I don't know, is there any other, because you just kind of started building this out of, not the, right at the beginning, but this was something that you've been doing for a while, right? Because I know, you know, some of your original ETF Pro conversations that you have done over the last 18 to two, two 18 months to two years, they've, they've focused on this type of content. Um, yeah. Yeah, so part the dog's trying to... It's not a big deal. So, um, yeah, so I'm an engineer. That's why. So that's the way I look at things, right? So I'm not... I don't want to... Like, I'm, when I'm saying these things, I'm not trying to denigrate anyone. That's not my... That's not the point. I'm just saying that I don't... I don't have an art degree. I don't have English lit. I, I can't write all these things. So I make stuff and I have to, for me, I have to figure out how it works. Like what, like without using that, why? <laughs> like, so when I was, a, so I was an ex submariner. When you're away, you're away. There's no phone, there's no email. You're just, you've got the books that you've got and you've got the stuff that you've got and that's it. Yeah. And you've got you. So there's no one I can call. So for me, it's, when I'm trying to figure something out, it's, I have to break it first. Right. So although they were really, and I, and I know I, I call them janky spreadsheets and stuff, but 
So I just go back, like I built a back test and said, right, if you use the 200 day and the 50 day moving average, what, what do you get? And it's like, in, depending on, and it, it varies depending on assets. Like I've said about the difference between like commodities and stuff are much more tied to much trade, much more like a trend follower would trade because take FX, you know, you guys, FX didn't come up once last night in the notebook review, right? <laughs> not. Not but it's not an area. Not, I mean, but that's what uh, I, but that's what I mean. But that's that, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say is that different people, like, without getting all the feelies, is things trade depending on the amount on the people that trade them. Yeah, commodities move more in line with trend followers because trend followers play there. Right. Right. Individual well, stock. It, individual stocks kind of don't because. At least, at least the classic trend followers just have access to the index futures. You know, Nikkei, S and P five hundred, Nasdaq, FTSE. They don't have all the individual stocks. Now, there's plenty of them that do. It's just that they're not the dominant agent within stocks, so they don't tend to follow that way. So yeah. when I so when I was making these and my video and the videos that I was making was literally me just putting everything that I was learning out that was like my that was like my journal if you like so a video is right. kind of like this is what i've learned over the last few weeks i made a video about it and then i moved on now some things i might have taken with me but some of those videos i made and i'm like right that's not that useful to me sure sure it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it's just because i've took the time to make a video about it doesn't mean that it's something that's really important and should be used all the time because nothing yep. i say should be used all the time yeah but, so yeah. just through just just how i work is the way that i learn it is i learn how to break it like understand like what breaks this what breaks the 50 day the golden cross whatever it's called what breaks it? Well, I don't know. Let's go and do a back test of it and do a back test. And it's like, well, the um, the win rate is like 53%. So it's, like, so it's a coin flip. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, why, so if you've got <laughs> like what sort of edge on the S&P 500 is 53%. It's like, and it's changed over time. That's the other part of like the stuff. So it really worked in the past. Yeah when the dominant agent were the people that were looking at moving averages on a chart. Right. Right. And stepping now in the, when it, now the dominant isn't looking at moving averages on a chart. Right. So that does, so the, the win rate has declined over time because the people that are playing there aren't using it or the largest part of the people that are using it, i.e. systematic algorithmic. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, yes, it's a really good point. And then, you know, what I, what I would say, again, for those that are listening, um, you know, I, I certainly hope you trust us and, and, and that kind of thing, because I know, you know, Chris has done a lot of work in this area, but what I would certainly encourage you to do is to try to go break it yourself, right? Go, go do these back tests. I mean, there's a reason why Keith has these like one liners and kind of makes fun about the moving, moving monkeys is because it's exactly what Chris did. And, and Chris took those, you know, little tidbits of information. It was like, well, let me go just basically verify that right let me go let me just go make sure that like the moving averages don't actually help at all and and you know he, he basically you know he you know he you know with with his uh calculations and the back testing all that kind of thing it just is not there so in in and, and chris you know again chris does this kind of full-time in for himself and his family and and so it's really important for him to understand again it's, it's important for any investor but but i'm just saying in terms of like you know you love to break things and I love that about you. And so it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of these things where, you know, you love to break things. You have a little bit of time on your hands in terms of like, you know, you're not going to overtrade. And so in order to not overtrade, you go and you go figure out kind of how, how can you, um, you know, what can you improve in the process to help make you better? Um, or like how, help, help, you know, test things that in, in, you know, that, that other people are considering. That's, I think one of the key reasons why you, you started diving into the gamma stuff and the Gex things. It was because it had been such a huge talking point over the course of 2021 and going into 2022 
and you started getting interested in it kind of in the fall. And then you were, and again, you, you, you admit, you, again, I'm not trying to speak for you, but you basically got out of all crypto in like November and, and you were just like, you know, you, you weren't investing in anywhere. So you like, you had time on your hands, you're hanging out with family and it was great, but you also, you know, you also. Family, family gets boring. So I had to. Make yeah, well, exactly. Right. I was just going to say, like, I mean, you, you can only hang out with family for so long, right. Without needing to. To, to go and, 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 and pursue, you know, new, like a, a new endeavor. And this, that new endeavor was kind of understanding gamma and, and how that, how that impacts um, the flows and, and, and that kind of thing, which, which again, you've kind like, of. To kind of tie that in. Okay. So, so tying it to bond, so the bond position right now. Okay. Yep. The, everything that drove, so growth, excuse me, growth and inflation like rocketing to the upside started, what was it? Like October, coming into November 20, into 2021, okay? And especially through that period and into February, that was like the pinnacle of everything. Like everything just ripped to the upside. Yep. To the point where people could buy anything even the stuff that done poorly, I think we spoke about this before, even the stuff that done poorly, like XLU was still up 17%. So even if you screwed up, you still made 17% on a yeah. relative poor, like a poor trade. Yeah. Right? yeah. The base effects for that are going to happen in reverse, but instead of being able to buy everything, there's only a small pool of things that people can buy. Absolutely. So while I've said, while I've said, you know, when I said at the start, you know, why I pick like, so XLRE is a bond proxy, which has picked up one month price momentum. Whereas up until today, at least bonds continue bond rates and bonds continue to go down. You know, it hadn't picked up the momentum yet. But the point that I think is that Keith's trying to make is there won't be a lot of chances because you can't, unlike in quad two, where you, you know he called it spreading your wings, you can just go and play in all kinds of different pools. There's going to be one pool that does well. And when money starts moving into it, you won't get a chance. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I mean, know- even- and, and so, like I've I've said about the hero trade of shorting, of like of, of um, you know the hero trade of shorting, putting on the short. But at least you know, I'm saying no, oh, it's a hero trade. What's well, not? It's going. It's it's in a downtrend. Yeah. Okay. Bonds at the minute, and that might have changed today. But bonds at the minute haven't started to move up yet, right? So that is the kind of that's the the hero trade in reverse. Yep. But if it's right, you won't get a lot of chances to get back into it. <laughs> yeah, and again, it's it's one of those things where you're gonna, if you want it to confirm, then you're gonna have to be comfortable paying up for that for the for the prices, and and it's basically gonna turn into almost like a momentum trade, which many people don't aren't comfortable doing because they're taught you know, value and buying at the low. Right. And, but like, when you see, you know, again, once it starts to move, like TLT is going to move. Right. And again, you're seeing that in the, this, even just the, the range of the risk range on the 10 year is, you know, call it 220 to 165. Right. I mean, that's, that's a huge freaking range. Right. I mean, if you remember back in like the, the bellies of the bees. Like if you go back and pull up like March of 2020, when we were in kind of like quad four, the ranges on the, on the 10 year and the two year, yeah. I mean, the two year, I remember was like, it was the most boring thing ever to watch and to write down because I want to yeah. say it was like, there was a point in time where it was like point, like basically 12 bips to like 16 bips or 12 to like 18 or like 12. And then it would go from like, 12, you know, to, again, it was like 14 to 20. And it was like, okay, this is the most boring thing. Oh, the range widened. <laughs> yeah. The range widened. It went, from, <laughs> it went from 16 to 17, you know, it was like, uh Oh, uh, but yeah, no, it was like so boring. And the 10 and the 10 year, again, I forget, I just really remember the two year because it was like so tight and it was, and it was, it was so tight. It was literally like four basis points wide. And it was like that forever. 
Uh, and then as it, then it did start to kind of drastically go. And then as volatility crept in, it did really start to widen. And that's when we sort of, you know, really knew, okay, this bond play is done, right? Like this, um, you know, like rates are, 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 you know, and even it kind of correlated to the dollar too at the same point. But anyway, that, that's kind of neither here nor there, but that's, that's what I'm, yeah, like that, that's kind of like, you know, all those things put together is the puzzle and the, like those pieces create the puzzle and the picture in terms of like where I want to, where I want to have the assets that I want to have allocations to. Now, again, it doesn't mean I'm going to go chase REITs today because like equities are, <laughs> equities are strong, but I doing well today. REITs are yeah, yeah, very well. I'd see, I, I believe it's very well. I've not really looked at my screen too much, but um, given all the RTAs that have come in and all of them are basically short. So I believe that they believe that, that, that they are, that, that, that the market is, is performing well. So well, I guess it's right there on the screen. I, everything. Yeah. Pretty much everything's green. Uh, anyway, long story short is I'm going to let kind of like some of these rates plays like REITs utilities, again, like kind of going back to like the gold thing in terms of the bottom of the risk range, you know, when you least expect to get the bottom of the risk range is typically when you'll get it. Right. And so, mm -hmm. but, but I'm going to be prepared because again, you like to, to, to position that portfolio in terms of not, it's not even being like ahead of the curve. It's just sort of seeing the board in terms of what's potentially coming down the pipe. And is that the XLRE? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so according to that, what's so like the 15 day is the middle of 15 days, like 45, Four and a bit or 46. Yeah. So what's that red line? What, what number is that? It's just hard to see on the screen. It's like, 40. sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. So it's uh, 45, 27. 45, 27. 45, 27. Got it. Yeah. So the point, like, so, so I think what you were, what you were trying to say with that is if we think that there's going to be a sell off in equities. Correct. You can short. And you can look at it as an well, XLRE is just just recaptured right, like literally today, recaptured one month price momentum. So if the whole market sells off, you'll have a chance to either build, start, add to your XLRE position. So it's both yep. sides. It's like you, so it's again, it's I guess prudent and planting. So yeah, okay, you can add shorts in whatever you want, um, XLY. And then use the profits from that to build into yep. your position in XLRE or XLU or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. And take, and yeah. taking both sides, taking both sides of it. It's yeah, just I, like, I and it's just for me, like, uh, I just perform, uh, maybe I'm just lazy and I don't like touching my positions very much. I just perform better when things are in strong uptrends because things go up more. <laughs> it's just that's just yep. and at yeah, least the I mean, models and the models that i build that i that i have built and look at seem to perform better in uptrends big time they certainly give you they certainly give you signals for shorts for sure what they do um i don't know whether it's the model or whether it's me i just i just don't seem to catch them as well that's all yeah no, I mean, it, uh, like the, the gold, gold is a great example of it's in a very strong uptrend or, and, and it is, you know, but it gave you, again, like we to go back to the beginning, it gave you a phenomenal opportunity here because it went basically all the way down to the low end of the risk range and then, and then put in, what did it put in a higher low today? I think so. Uh, 1902. So not quite a higher, higher low, but uh, I believe that's a higher high, isn't it? <clears throat> Yeah, 2050, yeah, 2052, higher high. So again, it's like volatility increased. So like the, the the range widened, but you know, it's more than likely going to confirm, you know, that that low end is more than likely going to start to raise up, right? Like this is sort yeah, of again, if you if you haven't built your position yet, it's like a, this is a key opportunity to either build it back up, right? If you had long and you sell sold at the top, right? In, in terms of you know, taking the profits or replanting, um, and or if you haven't yet you know, preparing yourself for the next uh, few months and potentially, you know, really nine to 12 months. Um, and if we can, so if we combine that with the point about gamma exposure is even if you, like, 
forget having to price all these hundreds of thousands of options and everything. The thing for me that I now have in my head is that the price has moved. Whatever caused the price to move, now, whatever triggered it to start with, whether it was the war or whatever else, okay, the price started to move. Now, previous to all of this, is people were still trying to buy cheap vol by buying out of the money calls, okay? Now, all of a sudden, whatever, like I said, whatever caused the price initially to move, the move was perpetuated because as we went up in price and vol moved up, as all of those calls that like, so I had like 2150 calls, <laughs> June 2150s, as they got closer, now I didn't quite get there, but as they got closer into the money, the market makers had to build up their inventory in the underlying asset. So that was the forced buyer. Whatever it was that caused the move, it was perpetuated by the options positioning. Yeah. So this is where I'm saying now is the, the bit that although I don't use it in equity land, the bit that I have in my head in terms of gamma exposure is that for the people that do have gold on their books and they have to hedge it, the position that they're hedging at isn't 1750 like it was two months ago. Now it's 1850. Um, yeah. So now it's 1800 or 1820 where they're trying to buy puts to cover their, you know, to cover like to cover their long yeah. positions or whatever, the levels have all completely changed, which means that the bulk of where the options are being sold at, in the money now have completely shifted. Yep. And I think uh, that ties into these, these levels. It's just regardless of what got the price there, people now have to treat it differently because the price is different yeah no the, the price moves and and the positioning moves right and <clears throat> and how they have to and how they basically have to hedge it moves um so it's it's really important that's where you know again like um you've kind of I, I was always paying attention to the gamma stuff but i didn't hadn't you know dove into it and you've definitely helped sort of I don't even know if dumb it down is the right word, but just sort of help explain kind of how it impacts your investing process. And therefore I've been able to kind of like extrapolate the pieces that, you know, to, to help, to help mine. And uh, it's really, again, it's like, you know, not to be a dead horse, but it's an important component to just have as a consideration. It's like just another toolbox in your, sorry, it's another tool in your toolbox as, yeah, exactly. as, as coach always loves to say, right. And like the more tools you have, the better you can, you know, build your house. And, and that's what we're trying to do. And, that, and that's really what, this whole video series is about is just to help, you know, again, not only explain some of the tools that we leverage, but then, you know, that are in our toolbox, but then also bring on other folks who also open our minds. I mean, Trend Wizzo was a great example of opening our minds to, 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 to new and different tools. Uh, Fractic Cat, I mean, everybody like Scott Lutzik, um, you know, Vexley, I mean, the, the, the list goes on and on, right. In terms of his varying components and different viewpoints in terms of how they're executing the process. And, um, we'll get some guests back on here. Uh, I think it's, it is really helpful. Again, obviously you and I could talk for ages, but, uh, you know, it, it isn't, you know, it, you know, the, the whole point of this process was to kind of bring in, you know, all of Hedge Eye Nation, right. And, 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 yeah. and, and others to, um, to help expand, on you know how to incorporate or how to better um, execute and and invest and, and create those asset allocations. So, um, my good sir, I appreciate um, your time today, and uh, looking forward to to next week. And then, obviously, to to, to the people out there, if um, you got any recommendation, if you got any recommendations for folks that you'd like to like to have us sit down with, by all means, you know, leave a comment. I'll do my best to kind of bring them on. And that kind of thing. So always open to uh, to new folks. You know, I certainly don't. You know, Chris and I don't don't know everybody out there. Um, and and so we'd love to, you know, sit down with um, all sorts of different folks, both uh, you know individual investors who have day jobs to, you know, more uh, seasoned vets as well, and how they kind of incorporate hedge eye. So it's it's a good good good. Uh, anyway, go ahead, Chris. Yeah. No, if this if this stuff as well, if there's stuff that people don't understand, just. We'll always answer questions about anything if there's stuff that doesn't make sense or no. More importantly, the, the bit for me is <laughs> selfishly is part, part of the videos was to put them up as well for people to say, no, you dumbass, you don't do it like this. You do it like this. Or go and read yeah. this. Yeah. Right? So, like share. That's the good thing about like the Hedge Eye communities. Everyone shares what they. Absolutely. And it's 
it's great. So it's, it's, if there's something that's blatantly wrong, then, you know, let us know if there's other stuff. If you want, if there's stuff in the hedge eye content that you don't quite understand and, you know, whether I do it here or whether I do it on the other channel or whatever, I'll try my best to try and answer it. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm exactly the same way, right? So yeah, totally, totally agree, Chris. Yeah, please. Um, you know, we're on episode 10, so we're still <clears> early <throat> days here, but, but you know, I think we're, uh, hopefully you guys are finding value and um, but again we're always open to um, new new ideas new concepts uh, d- diving deeper in a particular thing and and really this even video kind of came about from when we first did your kind of like intro and folks were like no let, let them talk more let them talk more it's like okay well I'm, I'm happy to but but we have to you know we, we have to you know you have to get there right it takes time you know and you can't just yeah. jump right in and be like okay you know show me your boxes right it's like okay no you gotta you gotta you gotta see you gotta set you gotta set the stage a little bit right I got to buy you a drink first, right, Chris? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, awesome, two drinks, man. Yeah, two drinks. Perfect. Awesome, guys. Well, we'll um, we'll talk soon. And and uh, again, please, you know, comment um, and, and and give us any feedback that, that you do that, that you desire. Constructive feedback. You know, we still have we have gentle. We have we, we, we yeah. We, we got strong egos, but not strong. We know, egos, we know that we're idiots already. Yeah, so exactly. Yes, yeah, so you don't need to remind us how, how idiotic we are. Exactly. Awesome, man. Cheers. All right, bud.